All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna to return to engineering dynamics, in particular 1D motion, and look at acceleration as a function of velocity. So in this example problem, we're given acceleration as a function of the velocity v here. And the function here is negative two, one minus v squared to one half. And this will be in units of meters per second squared. And usually in these types of problems, all those constants usually have units associated with it. A lot of times they're just given and, and told that the output would be in units of meters per second squared. So it could get a little bit confusing in that regard. We're also given some initial conditions or boundary conditions or just some known values at a specific time. And so here at time t equals zero, we know that the position of this particle s is equal to 0.5 meters and the velocity is zero. And what we'd like to find is the position when the velocity equals negative 0.8 meters per second. We'd also like to find the position when the time is 0.2 seconds. And so just as a, a quick recap, you know, the basic definition or basic relationships associated with 1D motion here is that the acceleration is a time derivative of the velocity dt, and the velocity is a time derivative of position ds dt here. As I substitute for time right here, I would get that v dv is equal to a ds like this. And because in this case, I have acceleration here, this acceleration is really with respect to velocity. This is actually going to be, I want to group all the variables together. So all the position variables and all the velocity variables on one side, and then all the position variables on the other side. So in this case, this acceleration, I'm going to bring to the left. And so the relationship would be V over the acceleration as a function of velocity dV is equal to dS. And what this will do, when I apply the integration, it'll give me the position as a function of velocity. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. And if I have the position as a function of velocity, well, then I'm just going to be able to plug in this negative 0.8 meters per second, and I'll get the position right away. So this is the relationship I'm going to use. And when I substitute into that, and now I just have to integrate. And the way I'm going to integrate is with some substitution here. So I'll substitute for 1 minus v squared. So I'll say u is equal to 1 minus v squared. The derivative of u with respect to v is equal to negative 2v, which just tells me that du, or actually dv, is equal to du over negative 2v. All right, now I can go ahead and make some substitutions. And at when I substitute here, this integral will become, and I will have all the v's, the velocity terms will cancel out. And this, and let's see, I will have, this will turn into, and so now I can just integrate u to the negative one half. And let's see, if I substitute for u back in here, Let's see, I have some initial conditions, or at least I know at time t equals zero, I had some initial conditions given to me. And so at t equals zero, my initial position, S sub zero, was 0.5 meters, and my initial velocity was zero. So in terms of the bounds for my integral, or for my integration here, this would be zero, and S zero would be 0.5 meters. And now when I go ahead and I evaluate this, I would, let me see here, I'd have one half, minus v squared to the one half minus one to the one half equals s minus 0.5 meters. And so what this gives me is essentially the position as a function of the velocity or vice versa. You know, all you have to do is do some algebraic manipulation. But if I simplify this, it should look like, it'll look like this. And I will get s is equal to 1 half the square root of 1 minus v squared, right here, like this. And so this is essentially the position as a function of velocity or with respect to velocity. 
And I know that you know a lot of these problems are kind of sloppy. They don't give no units associated with the numbers. And what we just have to remember is that the units of this equation here will output in terms of meters. And so that's my position as a function of velocity. And if I wanted to find the position at a velocity of negative 0.8 meters per second, I just got to plug and chug position when the velocity is negative 0.8 meters per second. This will just tell me that the position is one half the square root of one minus negative 0.8 meters per second. Don't worry about the units in this. Not a fan, but still, nonetheless, right here like this. And this will tell me that my position at this uh, velocity is 0.3 meters is my answer to part A. If I had wanted velocity with respect to position, which would be V of S like this, well, shoot, it's just a simple algebraic manipulation, right? And so here, I'm just gonna solve for V in terms of S right here. So this will just be, let's see, uh, and this would be velocity with respect to position. So we answered part A here which is the position when velocity is negative 0.8 meters per second. Now we want to know what's the position when t equals 0.2 seconds. And with that, we want to know a relationship of the position with respect to time. And there are a couple ways you could actually answer this problem. One way is to start with the acceleration that we have. We have acceleration as a function of velocity equals dv dt. And we can integrate this. We could set up this integral here, which would look like here. This is what the integral would look like. It'd be dt equals dv over the acceleration equation that we would plug in there. We would integrate this, and this would give us time with respect to velocity here, right here. Okay. And with time with respect to velocity, well, shoot, you can invert this algebra. You could just do an algebraic manipulation and you get velocity with respect to time. And then once you have the velocity with respect to time, you could actually start plugging and chugging here. You can actually calculate, you could calculate a value for the velocity at t equals 0.2 seconds like this. And with that, with this number now, this velocity at 0.2 seconds, you can substitute this value into the position for that velocity value and you would have the velocity at 0.2 seconds yeah all right that's one way to do it the way that i'm going to do this one is i will start i will i will take this relationship here that i already have right here and i'm going to apply the definition of velocity which is v equals ds dt and because i have velocity as a function of position i'm going to group all the position variables together, if you will. So my my relationship that I'm going to be using here, I'm going to manipulate this, it's going to be dt equals ds over velocity with respect to position like this. And so when I go ahead and I substitute, the actual integration will look like this. It'll be an integral of one, really, with respect to time is equal to this integral right here, and this ds over this velocity with respect to position, which is the square root of 1 minus 2s squared, like this. All right. And, and really, once you've set up the integral, the hardest part is, is doing the calculus. And so, wow, this is going to call for us to do another substitution and probably look up some integration tables or Wolfram Alpha. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen Wolfram. All right. So here, uh, this right here. We have, in our substitution, we would have u is equal to 2s, and so the derivative of u with respect to s would be 2, and so that just tells me ds is du over 2. And so when I make this substitution here, I would get, uh, let's see, du over 2 square root 1 minus u squared, like this. And so there's no easy substitution here. I, I've got to go look at my integration tables. And I suspect all of you would agree that if I put a square here, 1 squared minus u squared is the same as what I had before. Okay, It's the same as 1 minus u squared. And the reason that's useful is because in the integration tables, you know, I can just look it up and I, I see this in my integration, my calculus textbook. 
All right, and so this is what I have, and A just represents a constant. In this case, A would be 1, and then, well, oh, lucky me. You know, I use U and U. You are the same, A, and, uh, and I don't have to worry about the constant because I, have, I actually have bounds for my integral. And so here, uh, this integral is going to be an inverse sign, and so when I go ahead and I apply the definition here or this, this table, I will get right here and if i substitute back in for u and i think you know we had right here u was equal to 2s and so here if i substitute that back in i will get evaluated from s naught to s like this my initial conditions that i had t0 was 0 so this is 0 and s naught was 0.5 meters i'll get from here when i evaluate i will get t as a function of position and just something you want to be aware of is that when you evaluate inverse signs and all this in here, uh, make sure you're in radian mode, okay? <laughs> Unless you have like a specific conversion already mentioned, just, just be sure to use radian mode here. And so here, this is time with respect to position. And I would like to get position at, with respect to time. And so all, all I'm going to do is invert this equation here. I'm going to invert this function and solve for s in terms of t. And so when I go ahead and do that, I will get, let me do some algebra here. This will be my position as a function of time. And so now if I wanted to answer part b of this right here, all I got to do is plug and chug. And I want the position at time t equals 0.2 seconds. And so when I plug and chug, just make sure, again, your calculator is in radian mode. And the output here should be in units of meters. And this would be 0.461 meters. And this would be our final answer for part B. All right, so some of you may have been done with the problem now that I've answered the questions A and B, but really the power of dynamics is being able to see like the position, velocity, and acceleration with respect to time, identifying local maximums and minimums, like what's the furthest position out or largest displacement of my structure, uh, what, is, what is the fastest, you know, what's the largest velocity what is the minimum velocity? When does it change direction? What is the acceleration? Is it increasing, decreasing? So those are all questions that we'd like to know as a function of time. A very useful tool in dynamics is to always plot the functions that we work with. And so here I use a program called MathCAD. I have, uh, it says x of t, x is the position. I had to include the units. The program lets me include units here. So it's 0.5 meter sine of 2t, two, uh, 2 per second is the units here, plus pi over 2, which is in radians. And then it'll take a time derivative for me here, which is this d over dt, x of t. And then it'll take an acceleration, which is the derivative of the velocity. And then I can plot this here. And what you see here, the green line, is the position as a function of time and you can just all it's doing is it's oscillating between 0.5 and negative 0.5 meters you can think of here a mass that's connected to a spring and it's frictionless the system is frictionless has no what's called damping associated with this and if you can imagine this is this direction here is x of t and this represents the origin or zero and so what happens is imagine i take this mass spring system i pull it i pull this to 0.5 meters here i let go and what it does is this thing moves back and forth the middle of it right here this point right here moves back and forth Here's negative 0.5 meters continuously. Once I pull back and I let go, it moves back and forth. The reason that I know that I'm just letting go is because here, when I pull it back to 0.5 meters as times t equals zero, I'm essentially letting go. So, and I know that because my initial velocity right here is zero. And so my initial velocity is zero. Uh, it's got some acceleration or uh, associated with really the spring, the stored energy, pulling it back in 
to its at rest position and then it goes back and forth the green line is the position line right and then we have the blue line is the velocity line so when the velocity is zero we'll see that we're, our position is negative 0.5 and it just means it's changing direction right when the when the when the mass spring system is here at negative 0.5, it's going to start going back the other way. It's going to start going back the other way. When my acceleration is zero, my acceleration is zero, well, I have a maximum velocity or a minimum velocity, depending on which location you look at, right? Okay, so those are interesting. That this really is just the it's a typical behavior of oscillation. Uh, maybe eventually after this course, you'll take a course in dynamics or in vibrations, and then you'll figure out you'll learn about what's called the period and the frequency of vibration. All right, so take it easy. Structure free.